Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilma again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to invite you to subscribe to the channel because it's really going to help me in improving this community. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue on the post-processing effects with HDRP. HDRP is the high definition rendering pipeline that you need to release not too long ago. This is still in preview, but a lot of people are using it. I'm using it with some of my prototypes, so I really recommend it. So let's jump into Unity today and look at some additional post-processing effects that I want to show you. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing today, which is create a new scene for Video 4. And in addition to that, we're going to be adding additional effects. So in the previous videos, I show you how to add a visual environment, exposure, procedural sky. Also, we look at vignetting, the Pranini projection, chromatic variation, ambient occlusion, tone mapping, and then some additional post-processing effects. And we went through and I, I show you step-by-step step how to set this up. And just keep in mind that these are specific for HDRP. They're also available on the post-processing stack V2, but they might be either combined or they might have a different name. So let's go ahead and get started. So for this video, I'm going to create a new folder. This one is going to be video underscore four. And this is basically what I do on every video. I'm going to clone video three. And there we go. So we can have a video four folder for the effects and also a video four for the scene. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clone these two effects and I'm going to drag them and drop them into video four. So these are basically the volumes that we're going to be using for the HDRP. Okay, so now they're there and let me make sure that they have the right title. So I'm going to call them four so that we know that these are for this video. Excellent. Now let's go back into the scenes folder and then double click on video underscore four. Excellent. I'm going to resize these things a little bit so that you can see what we're working on. I'm also going to be removing the bloom because I think I think it's actually the depth of field that is causing the the blur because it's really hard to see. I think I had some people telling me if I could just remove the depth of field because it wasn't you know for this video it didn't really it didn't really do the justice. So in fact I could. Let me see if I can make it look better. If not, we'll just go ahead and remove it because I think it's it's basically making it too blurry. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. Well, before we remove it, I wanna leave it because this is gonna be. Remember that this one is for the previous video, so let me go ahead and undo, undo, and right about there. So for this video, I don't wanna modify the previous one, so I'm going to associate this one with number four, and then let's do the same thing on volumetric fog volume going to select number four for video four. Now we can make the changes and it's going to apply just for this scene. So I'm going to remove the depth of field, which we just basically click on this icon right here and then click on remove. There we go. So now that's a lot clearer and we can see the car and also how the effects look like. Then the other thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to be, let's just get a little closer to the car. So we can see a little bit more of the car. Excellent. All right, so for this video, I want to add a couple of more effects. And to do that, I'm gonna go into post-processing volume. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other effects that are also available. And, and one of them is also actually the lift cam again. So this one, what we can do is we can enable the lift. And as I'm, as I'm changing, you can see that I can change the lift value. And I can also increment it in here if I wanted to, you know, make it lighter or if I wanted to make it dark. And I can also select, you know, if I go around the circle, maybe I wanted this scene to be, you know, a little bit red. And, and we can also change, you know, the exposure. And there we go. We can do something like that. So that's basically what the leaf will give you. And it gives you a lot of flexibility on, on changing the colors. Also on the gamma value, if we go in and can see how I can change, it kind of looks like what I had originally. Well, we can, we can go around. And what I'm doing with my mouse, I'm dragging around just to see, you know, what look and feel will look good for this scene. And we can do, we can do something like that I think works. 
And if I wanted to, you know, make it really light or a little darker, I could do that. And if we look at the gain, I can also, you know, I can brighten it up and we can also drag it down to the blue. And I can move it up if I wanted to. I think that gives it a really cool, really cool look. See the sun is, is also changing and I like how everything everything is looking. Okay, so that's kind of what the, the lift gamma gain will give you. Let's click on add over right and then go to post processing. The, the other effect that I was going to show you is the lens dis distortion. And this is one that I use a lot. And if I want to, you know, maybe make a, a 3D model or a scene stand out, then you can play you can play a lot with the lens distortion. So if I enable the intensity, you'll see that you know all of a sudden I'm getting I'm basically getting the scene augmented and it's basically changing the you know the intensity of the lens. So if you wanted to do maybe you are you know pointing your gun at a specific area and you wanted to you know make it make it look more like you're targeting uh, maybe you want to shoot somebody or or something uh, an enemy in the in your game you can do something like that or simply like for this effect I think that looks really cool I can also change the if I wanted to do just the X value I could just modify the X value or if I wanted to just modify the Y I could do that so I'm gonna leave these two off because I don't think those are and what I'm gonna do in this scene let's do 0.5 Thing that looks cool. The other thing that I can do too is I can change the center. So, and if I wanted to change the center, you can see how maybe you want to have a transition where you're animating this. And I can see where these could apply for a lot of different things. You can also do you know that on the y-axis. And I'm not going to use it on this in this case, but you can change basically either the x value or the y value. So now the scale value as well. If you wanted to scale you can you can use this value for that and you can play with the you know the intensity and also how much you're scaling and see how you know how that works for the scene that you're working on so for now I think I'm just gonna use the intensity and the scale I'm just gonna disable I think I like how I always keep it very simple I think I like how that looks so let's it kind of makes it look like a you know a bigger a bigger car and if I do maybe something like that, I think that gives it a really cool look. So, so that's what lens distortion is, and, and also I, I show you lift gamma. Let's do one more effect and we'll wrap it up. So let's go ahead and go into, into the out of right and select another post-processing effect. So we could do, there's, there's many other ones that I'm going to be covering. So just to keep it short, let's go ahead and look at color adjustments. So, so this is one that, that I also use a lot. And this one we can override the, the exposure of the pose. So if I want to make the scene maybe lighter or wanted to make it darker, this is basically going to apply an overall exposure to the entire scene. So, well, you not only the entire scene, but based on the volume, if you have this volumes layer, it's basically going to be applied based on the priority that you have. And of course, based on the way that you set. So just keep in mind that this is going to affect a lot of your scene. So let's go ahead and leave it back. Uh, maybe we'll just increment a tiny bit so that we so we can use it. Then the other thing that we can use is the contrast as well. So if we want to play with the contrast, maybe make it brighter. So if we undo, let's do let's make the contrast about let's do 30. I think that gives it a cool look. The other one that is really cool too is the color filter. So if I wanted to filter these, and let me see what I can what we can come up with. I always go around until I kind of, and it depends on the mood of your scene and also your the style that you're trying to achieve. So, to be honest, I I like it without it. So I think that it's a style that I like. But like I said, if you want to apply that, you can use the color filter to do that. The hue shift is also really cool. So you can play with that. See how that gives us some really interesting style so you can see that I wanted to make it more futuristic more Tron style I could do something like that and also play with exposure so you can see how that can help you there and let me uncheck it and then the last one is the saturation if I wanted to make it 
you know, maybe maybe remove and do a black and white, you know, black and white scene, or maybe give it a little bit of color, but not that much. I think for this scene, I could I could do a little bit of saturation. We can probably go back and do can probably just do point let's see negative twenty five. I think works great and excellent. So I think I like I like what we have what we have going on in there. Okay, so I think I'm gonna wrap it up in here. So just to, as a as a summary and, and basically an overview of what we went through, I show you how we could use the lift cam again, also the lens distortion, and lastly we looked at color adjustments. And all of these ones were our post processing effects uh, can be assigned to a volume in in the HDRP pipeline. So. On the next video, we're going to be looking at a couple of more post-processing effects, and I'm hoping to basically cover every single effect in, in this series. And then I'm going to start looking into lighting and show you how lights get affected and apply in HDRP. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net. They have amazing tutorials for game developers. Also check me out in Patreon where I'm posting information about what's happening behind the scenes with my channel, what's happening with my games, and everything that I'm doing, and also early access to source code. So thank you very much, guys.